Do you like gold as much as I do? Welcome to episode 1 of Farming Azeroth, the series where I share my best gold farms with you. Today's farming route will make you over 500 gold a minute. This is my mailbox after filming today's video. 15,000 gold in half an hour. No random drops, no extremely rare BOEs, none of that rubbish. Guaranteed 500 gold per minute. I'm going to start with an overview. I'm going to show you on a map where we're going, going to show you everything up front. Then I'll actually run you through each of the routes so you can see how simple it actually is. Stay tuned because after that I need to give you some important tips that are specific to this route as well as some tips on farming in general. And then I'll finish up the video with some time lapses of me actually running these routes a few times to prove that this farm works. Today's route is in Ardenweald. We're down in the southwestern corner. The reason this part of the map is so good is you won't get any death blossom or any lace stride ore. You only get the good stuff. The downside to this route is there's lots of elite mobs around. I'm going to show you how to completely take all the elite mobs out of the equation. I'm going to show you three different paths. The main path is through the Misvale Tangle. A secondary path goes through the Elder Stand, and there's a third optional path which starts in Root Home and gets lots of extra Vigil's Torch. These three mushrooms are very important. The key to avoiding all the elites are these bounding dark shrooms. These little tiny purple mushrooms that you've probably not noticed. Or if you have, you thought they just bumped you up in the air. But have you ever taken a second to read the buff it gives you? It actually gives you stealth against mobs for 60 seconds. I can get super close to this cat and he doesn't care. Now you can even mount with this buff so you don't have to be a druid. Now the only thing I've found that drops this buff is casting wild charge. But other than that you can do pretty much anything. For this farm you're going to want a character that has both mining and herbalism. If you've only got one, that's okay, but you make way more money with both. Druids can be pretty handy, but any class can do this. The route today will get us some Phaedramor, some Alethiamore, Vigil's Torch and Nightshade. On my server, it's currently 24 gold for a Vigil's Torch, 27 gold for a Phaedramor, 88 gold for a Nightshade and 100 gold for Alethium. Now each server has its own economy. On your server you might get more than this, or you might get less. Alright, let's do this. The first route today is through the Misvale Tangle. We're going to start on this mushroom here. We're going to do a lap of the maze. Use this mushroom to leave the maze. And then we'll finish the route where we started. This is the first bounding dark shroom of the trip. But before we do, let's pick up this node. Bit of tasty Phaedrum never hurt nobody. And let's get straight into this maze. So we use this to boost ourselves up. You can see I've got this big weak aura on my screen that tells us exactly how long we've got until our stealth runs out. You can see with this buff we can get quite close to these mobs and they don't care at all. Get our second Phaedrum node of the trip and let's keep going through. Now down in my bottom left corner here I've got a few weak auras set up so you can see what's happening as I go. It'll tell you exactly how many herbs and ores I've picked up. It'll tell you how much gold I've made based on current auction house prices. It's got the in-game stopwatch running and a couple of weak auras that calculate exactly how much gold I'm making per minute. Third Phaedrum and we're doing pretty well. Now this is this here's a bit of a mistake on my part. I try and go and get this node, but it's actually on the other side of the wall. Not to worry, off we go. Now you can see my buff starting to get low, so I hit this mushroom here to bounce myself back up again. And here we go, the fourth Phaedrum node. And this is a rich node as well. On my minimap, you might notice that there's quite a few different markers and things going on. All of the red crosses are mushrooms. So I've gone through and marked all the mushrooms on my minimap so I can easily see where they are. So if I'm ever getting low on my stealth buff, I can just hit the nearest mushroom and reset it. Now this mushroom in front of me here is the one we're going to use to leave the maze. But before we do, there's a couple of extra nodes just up ahead to pick up. So let's quickly get them. Bit of Phaedrum here. Now this stag patrols back and forth here. I almost always aggro on him for some reason. Let's get this Vigil's Torch. And back we go to our mushroom. And yep, I do aggro on him. But that's okay, because we're up and away. Now we jump out of here and continue up along the edge. There's a few stars on the minimap. They mark places where you can enter and leave the maze. I usually don't use them at all, because I usually use the mushrooms to jump in and out of the maze instead. Bit of an unlucky run here, not finding much at all. Another Vigil's Torch. 
and it looks like this might be the last node we get this run. It's a nightshade, and now we go back to where we started. So all up, that run took us two and a half minutes. We almost made 1500 gold, and that works out to about 570 gold a minute. Not bad. So I'm just going to pull out my auction house, dump everything from my inventory, and let's get straight into the next route. For today we'll be going through the Elder Stand, just north of the maze. We're going to start from the same mushroom and do a loop up around the north. Now we've only got one mushroom for this entire route so we've got to make sure we make the most of it. Now an extra little complication with this part of the maze are these bushes. These are part of the Night Fae Covenant quest and they will show up on your minimap as herbs even though you can't interact with them. I've marked them on my minimap with these big triangles, that way I know any herb under a triangle is not a real herb and I can safely ignore it. So let's go, starting from the same mushroom, we bounce ourselves up, get ourselves a full 60 second debuff, and let's get up to the Elder Stand. It's important that we start by going left here, because there's a lot of elites that stand really close to the nodes. We will lose our mushroom buff about halfway through this run, but that's okay, because the second half of the run's a bit easier to avoid the mobs. So around here's our first Phaedra Moor. You can see there's quite a few guys that are really close to me here. And a Vigil's Torch here. We sneak on past this big guy. Under these nasty looking bats. And get a second Phaedra Moor. Now our buff's starting to get a bit low. We sneak past the last of the mobs. And get a nice big rich Phaedra Moor. A vigil's torch hiding around the corner here. On the minimap you might see a little node with an X over it. That node seems to be bugged. For some reason I can never find it to loot it. I think it might be spawning inside the wall or something. I don't know. So I pull a bit of aggro here but that's okay. Keep on running through while I mount it up. Get another Phaedrum node here. These mobs often pull but I usually hit them with a mass entanglement. Pick up some Vigil's Torch, and time to close out the loop and finish where we started. There's one extra bonus herb here, a Nightshade, and let's finish. So all up, this run took us 2 minutes and 22 seconds. We got 1200 gold, which works out to be about 530 gold a minute. And I'll clear out my bags again, and I'll show you the final loop for today. I like to think of this route as the Vigil's Torch route. It doesn't make us as much money, but it does bring in a lot of extra Vigil's Torch. This route starts in Root Home. We'll enter the maze down here where we'll pick up the Mushroom buff. We'll poke around the maze a little bit. We'll use this Mushroom to leave the maze. And then we'll finish the route back in Root Home. I'm starting here at the Root Home flight point. Let's leave the town to the south and get started. Now I got tempted by this Phaedra Moor off to the left here. I don't usually go this way. Because there's mobs here that sit in stealth, but tangling roots and off we go, and use incarnation to stealth away from the other. And we're back on track. There's another Phaedra Moor hiding here inside this tree. Now this route has a lot more Vigil's Torch than the other routes I showed you earlier. On my server Vigil's Torch doesn't go for as much gold, so I tend to make a bit less gold when I go on these routes. I tend to average around maybe 300 gold a minute rather than the 500 gold from the other paths. So I'll pick up this nightshade here, and there's another Vigil's Torch just over this hill. Grab another Vigil's Torch over here, and now we're approaching the entrance to the maze. So as we start to get a bit closer, I go into cat form, I go into stealth, and right here is a very conveniently placed mushroom. Pick up the buff, slowly glide down and pick up this Vigil's Torch here. Now we'll continue on with a short little lap through the maze. Ah, we pulled a bit of aggro here. That's okay, we can probably ignore it. Pick up this Vigil's Torch. Keep on moving before this cat catches up. A big rich Alethium node, now that's pretty nice. Now this mushroom coming up here is very important. This is the one we use to leave the maze. It gets us up on this plateau here. 
there's almost always a Vigil's Torch here that we can grab. And I use this plateau to just skirt around the edge of the maze. Up here we can climb over these rocks and run along the ledge here and jump back down into this part of the maze. There's usually a few Vigil's Torch scattered around so pick up any that you see. Now this route takes a little bit longer than the other routes that I've run. All up it took about three and a half minutes which is actually really good because now all the nodes are starting to respawn. Now you can see this node to my right on the minimap. That's actually a respawn from one that I got earlier on up on top of this cliff. So I'll pick up a couple of herbs here and now we'll finish off our route in Root Home. We got 2000 gold this run, took three and a half minutes and that works out to about 530 gold. But we did get a bit lucky with the Alethium drops that time. Ordinarily you wouldn't make quite this much money doing this lap. Okay. Now let's get into a few tips and tricks that might make your life a bit easier. First of all, let's talk mushrooms. So these three mushrooms are the ones that are most important for today's runs. These are the coordinates if you want to jot it down so you can make sure that you can find them later. This northernmost mushroom at 2852 is the most important because it's the anchor point for two of the routes that we run. You can see it's right here and it gives us easy access into and out of the maze. This mushroom here at 2656 is also very useful because it helps us get out of the maze once we're in it. It is worth bearing in mind that there's a few mobs around here which can get very close to this mushroom, so be careful not to pull aggro when you're heading towards this one. And finally, this mushroom down the bottom here at 30 by 58 is really useful if you want to get out of the maze down this bottom southeastern corner. If you find that there's competition at the other routes, sometimes I use this mushroom to jump out and go and get some Vigil's Torch for a bit. It's also a good way to get out to get back to Root Home to get to the flight point. Now if you're playing a Druid like I am, I'd highly recommend going Feral and taking the Mass, Mass Entanglement talent along with the Incarnation talent. The great thing about the Feral version of Incarnation is it lets you cast Stealth while in combat. So for example here, I've pulled a whole bunch of mobs. There are some nodes here I want to collect. So I cast Incarnation, cast Stealth, and I'm out of combat. Easy as that. Of course, Feral Druids aren't the only ones who can drop combat. Rogues can vanish, Hunters can feign death, Mages have invisibility, any Night Elf can cast Shadow Meld, and the list goes on. Mass Entanglement is also very useful in this route. You can use it if you know you're going to pull aggro. You can use it if you're running past mobs that you think you're going to aggro to just root them in place while you slip past. Have you ever noticed that Mass Entanglement's icon has a gnome and a couple of humans stuck in the roots? If you've pulled aggro like I have here, you can turn around, root them in place, pick up your ore undisturbed, and frolic along at your own pace. Here there's a mob that's really close to a node, so I root him before running in to pick up the herb. And since it is a Mass Entanglement, it roots this fellow over the side here and I can just glide on out. No drama. Now I'm going to finish this video with a few time lapses of me running each of the different routes. Show you a few different variations on the routes. And I've sped it up so it doesn't actually take that long to watch. So with this first time lapse we're going through the maze. Now one of the good things about these routes is each one only takes a few minutes. I think the shortest lap I did was about one and a half minutes and the longest route was three and a half minutes. That's nothing. So if you ever have a few minutes spare, log on to your farming toon, do a lap, might only take you two minutes, get a thousand gold, and off you go. It's a great thing to do between battleground queues, while you're waiting for your dungeon queue to pop, while you're queued up for LFR or anything else. But really, it's quick, easy gold. While I'm waiting for our guild raid to get started, I tend to log on and do a couple of laps here just to line my pockets. And after you've had a bit of practice and you memorize where all the different mushrooms and elite mobs and everything else are, it actually becomes really easy. So here's a lap, took me under 3 minutes, made 1600 gold, which works out to 560 gold a minute. Now here we go with another lap of the Mistfowl Tangle. There's a couple of nice convenient nodes before we start the lap, which gives us a nice little boost. Now about a month before I made this video, these routes were making a lot more than 500 gold a minute. When prices were a lot higher, I was getting closer to two or even 3,000 gold a minute. 
Now prices are pretty low at the moment, but you never know, things might perk up in a in the next patch as people need to get more materials to make more supplies. So at the moment I'm stockpiling. I'm storing up heaps of Phaedrum, sending it to an alt. As long as they don't introduce new ore or something. I mean, who knows what they're going to do in the future. It's anyone's guess. Thanks so much for watching my videos today. Please do subscribe, we are a new channel. If you do subscribe it lets me know that you're interested and I'll hopefully make more videos. If you're interested at all in the add-ons I'm using here, I use weak auras to track this buff in the middle of the screen. Highly recommend getting weak auras and learning how to create some simple weak auras like this. So this is very simple, it just tracks my buff. All the icons that I've marked on my map I use handy notes to track. That's pretty handy. Haha, <laughs> get the pun. You just type slash HN new, which stands for handy note new, and it puts a new marker on the map where your character's standing. So to put all these markers in my map, I just ran around to each of the mushrooms, typed in slash HN new, and put crosses in the relevant places. So that's handy notes. Okay, this lap took us three minutes and we made 2000 gold. That is fantastic. That is absolutely amazing. This comes to 740 gold a minute. You might notice a few lines on my minimap. I use an add on called Roots, and you can make your own roots and they'll show up on your minimap. So I use this to sort of give myself a bit of a guide for where I probably should be running. And to make my minimap as big as it is, I use the Sexy Map add on. I really like making the minimap a square. I just feel like I get to see a little bit more of the world. Now something I should mention about this part of Ardenweald is there's lots of world quests that tend to pop up. Generally when these quests pop up I try to avoid farming. Simply because there's lots of other people that flood in here and take half the nodes and it just makes it a bit unreliable. It's still good, like it's still bloody good, but it's not 500 gold a minute good. While I was filming these videos today, there was actually the patrolling in Turner Scythe world quest was up. So there were a few people around here doing world quests and nabbing some of my nodes. You can see here they're fighting this mob here. So this route took 2 minutes and 41 seconds, we made 885 gold, which works out to 330 gold a minute, which is pretty bad. Now this time we're going to do a lap of the Elder Stand. I find that the Elder Stand is actually a really short route, you can get through it really really quickly. And you also get a lot of Phaedrum deposits up here. And it may be different on your server, but on my server Phaedrum nets a lot of gold. I don't know why, because it's actually really easy to get. You can see here I drew a bit of aggro, but we root the mobs and continue the route. So all up, this was a very quick little lap, it just took us a minute, one and a half minutes. Made 900 gold, which is about 630 gold a minute actually, that's pretty good. That's pretty bloody great. Now I'm going to do a whole bunch of these laps where I get the Vigil's Torch. And I think I did all of these loops in one cut. Now as I mentioned before, these routes tend not to make as much gold as the other ones. I do run them occasionally if I do need some Vigil's Torch. I mean, I should probably be running the other routes that make more gold, sell the Phaedrum, and then just buy the Vigil's Torch. But there's something about farming your own herbs that just feels a lot better, even though it's objectively worse. So I do find that going into the maze here as part of this route, you can pick up quite a few Phaedrum and Alethium, and that tends to push you over the threshold and make you a bit extra gold. So the more time you spend going in and out of the maze, the more gold you're going to make on this route. And the more time you spend out of the maze, 
the more Vigil's Torch you're likely to run across. So this run was three and a half minutes and we made 1600 gold. Works out to about 440 gold a minute. This run took 3 minutes, made a thousand gold, works out to about 310 gold a minute. This loop took 3 minutes and 20 seconds, made 1600 gold, works out to about 478 gold per minute.
Now this uh, lap didn't end too well. As we got to this part of Turner Scythe, there was a warlock sitting here. And it, he's been, he'd been there the whole time farming mobs and was pretty much ignoring me. But because I'm in war mode, he decided to have a go at me. <laughs> he dots me up, I try and just run away and ignore him. Pop stampeding roar. Try and get some distance between me and him. But those warlock dots tick bloody hard, don't they? At this point I need to pop out of travel form and start to top myself up. Pop a convoke, and just for a quick 100% heal. And so we got a few less herbs that time dealing with that warlock. And what did we get? This route took 3 minutes, 3 minutes 20, made about a thousand gold, which works out to about 337 gold a minute. Still not bad, even with a bit of world PvP. So thanks so much for watching this everyone, please do consider subscribing to the channel, and I'll see ya next week.